This debate is a series created, produced, and directed by Dave Morgan, who is a dear friend of mine. Dave is a serial and serially successful entrepreneur. David has successfully built two huge, two, uni, two and a half huge companies. His, the half is because this company is not huge yet, but it's really big and really successful, and that's Simul Media. So let's see, we've got Dave Poltrak about to sit down. Dave runs all of research for CBS and certainly an icon in the industry. Alan Cohn, who I've known for that many years, too many years, uh, but Alan's been a dear friend for many years as well, uh, running NBC and ABC marketing, right, for a long time, Alan? Yeah. And then uh, helped build the media group at Omnicom and bundle that all together, and now is uh, uh, basically head of a terrific boutique shop, uh, Giant Spoon. Right? Excellent. Uh, Dave, I mentioned. Uh, so you're going to see the Dave, great Dave Morgan debate. And like I said, Simul Media is now his current project, mm -hmm. which is delivering targeted media and doing some amazing things and using data to deliver targets uh, in, in regular television. And then Chris Magel. Uh, uh, Chris is a terrific guy, also a long-term friend who controls much of uh, America's media now. He is not only uh, very savvy with television, with network, but all forms of buying, and has been a great passionate uh, uh, leader of digital place-based media over the years as well, Chris, so it's, it's good to see you here. And for now, a year on our shores, Helma Larkin came over from Ireland and is the CEO of Posterscope, and has done a great job of kind of building within the, uh, the legacy of Aegis and what we were talking to about Dave Verklin before, some really smart strategies coming previously from the M&A world? Yep. Right, so bringing a lot of great discipline to this business. So Dave, I'm gonna hand it to you. Take it away, my friend. Great to see you. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna complete one of the introductions because we have big news today. As of today, uh, Chris Mago was named the president of operations at Initiative. Wow, look at that. Wow. And now it's just not, not just controlling the money, it's also having to make sure everything runs on time. So. But he's, wrong, he's on the wrong side, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so, noticing that this is a pinstripe sweatshirt with a, <laughs> with a hoodie. And yeah, I'm I, in a startup. I'm a startup guy. Looks you know? very presidential. I think, <laughs> I think I should get one of those. I, I will get you one. I'm going to get you one for your new <laughs> job, because you should have one. Um, so I'll give you a little bit of the format we're going to have here, because this is a little unconventional. Um, this isn't going to be a panel like you're used to seeing. Um, it's going to be a debate. We have two different groups that are going to be taking different positions of a resolution. The resolution is going to be a statement, and that statement is going to be argued for and against. Each team will present openings. Each person, they can divide, they can divide them among themselves. Then they are going to be to ask questions. Each person will ask questions of the other side. I'm going to get to ask questions of each side, and then they're going to have a closing statement. And then if you all choose that you want to judge, we can even determine to take like a hand vote or something like that. I know. So, and I've refused to let any preparation calls occur here. Hence, it's, now I don't, didn't know we had to ask questions, too. <laughs> yeah. mm. That's, That's okay, we're ready. Better. It's all the better, yeah. we're all pros here. So here is the resolution. Video advertising should be treated screen agnostically and valued equally whether it is viewed on a tablet, phone, PC, TV, kiosk, or other place-based device. To viewers, it's all about the content. The screen doesn't matter. That's the statement. To my right, your left is the team for this resolution. To my left, your right is the team against this resolution. We are going to run this on a clock. It will be run tightly. Um, so we are going to now start where there's three minutes for an opening argument. can be divided however they decide to use it for team four. You may begin and start the clock when they start speaking, please. Chris and I feel really strongly about this uh, resolution, and we're going to convince you today why. And actually, I think a lot of the speakers today are also said a lot of things, a lot of themes that have come up that will support our argument. There's three main areas I want to hit on um, to prove the, out this resolution. The first is audience. You know, as marketers, we're always trying to understand the mindset of the consumer as they go about their journey and see these screens. We would argue that the screens are relevant. It's really what they're thinking when they're in front of the screens and the content that we put in front of them and how receptive they are to that content and that message. 
The second is consumer behavior. It's quite an obvious one, but consumer behavior is changing dramatically. Screens, you know, we, we expect content to be available to us at all times. You know, the Gen Z generation, the post-millennials were born into a world of, of multiple screens. They don't think about it in silos today at all. And actually, in fact, brands don't either. I think the lady from at and who spoke earlier said, we don't put it into buckets. I think the screens are relevant. They expect to have content. My nephew, for example, he, he sees, you know, he goes on the iPad, he's on an iPhone, he's looking at YouTube. He doesn't really think about what screen, he just wants content available when, he's, um, when he wants it. You know, the consumer is uh, in charge, is what we heard today. They're driving the consumption, and, uh, and, and that's really what makes, uh, you know, screen buying agnostic. And then lastly is, uh, is content. I think Laurie uh, Hiltz this morning, she, she summed it up really, um, really well when she talked about content should resonate and not be redundant. It should share, be shareable and not skippable. You know, we go around, apparently we, are, we see 5,000 branded messages um, every day as we go about our daily lives. I think to cut through this noise, we know that we need to have great content. And I think the context for content is also very important really thinking about, you know, again, what the consumer is doing during the day and how we choose to serve them messages throughout the day. Content is king, just to riff off of a, uh, of a phrase that everybody talks about, but context is the kingdom. I think good content gets to the point, so I'd like to argue that between audience, con changing consumer behavior, and good content, that we should be buying screens agnostically. Am I allowed to add? You have 44 seconds. 44 seconds. Yeah. Um, so, I don't think the argument has to necessarily be that everything is equal. I think what we do believe very strongly is that there are many screens with an ability to reach consumers using a very powerful video medium. And quite frankly, they should be counted the same way from the starting point. So we believe in a common metric in terms of counting the audience that's potentially reachable across all of those screens. And what really would change what you think the result is going to be, or I would really would uh, reflect what you think the result is going to be, is the price that you pay for the advertising on each of those screens. You might be Perfect. You got it just in at the buzzer. Right. <laughs> now, we have a new three-minute clock. The team against the resolution. Do you want to start? I'll start, yeah. So, uh, so I, I think we have to focus exactly on what the resolution says which, and, the, and decide how we're going to define it because the, the, the screen being agnostic, okay, so the idea is that the, are we talking about the pixels, the size, uh, or are we talking about the screen in the context in which it is used? Uh, because you can't really separate a screen from a context, from its context. A person viewing something on a mobile phone is in a totally different mindset from somebody that's doing it on a television set. Uh, the, the whole concept, uh, we communicate, uh, programmers and advertisers communicate through uh, sound and, mo and video. Uh, the relationship between audio and video is a key part of the communication. Uh, how audio and video mix on a screen is, is dra dramatically different from the different experiences with those screens. And the third area is, it's, it's a contextual area, is, is the concept of borrowed interest. Because the idea, the screen doesn't begin to work, the, the, the screen has to be in a context that will get people's attention. And the unique thing in television, you have the borrowed, co you have content delivering people to the advertising content. In other forms like place-based media, the, the content is, has to draw the people there on its own who are passing by or, or whatever the context is. So context is critical, but I think the most important element is uh, to understand that the screen cannot be separated from the actual viewing experience. I would just add to that, you know, we live by this formula, which it's not because I am fat, but it's called the fat formula, which is format, audience, and timing. 
And I think that you, you know, the, David talked about the mindset. You, it is a different mindset. Also, I think the content that is created for the different platforms leads me to think that how could it ever be that a Snapchat video would look good in a movie theater or, 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 or on a TV screen? I just, I don't, I can't imagine it. But, um, but I feel like, you, you know, when you're doing this work, you've got to think about, from an advertiser perspective, who's going to create the campaign? And I'm all for the measurement of all the different areas, like Chris talked about. But, and, I, and I know that the consumer is in many different places. However, I think you really have to consider the mindset and the, the actual tolerance of the, of the person to be able to sit there through the ad. OK. Just reminds people it's always there. <laughs> so Helma, you have one minute, and you can use this minute either for one or more questions, which you can direct to a specific panelist or to make a statement. And then they're going to have two minutes for answers to those um, and, and rebuttal. No, I've never been to Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the question. I asked you that already backstage. I don't think we're debating that we, that we would use the same piece of content for each screen. I don't, I don't think that's what we're debating. So I don't think that a piece of Snapchat content would, would look good on TV or in the cinema. I think we're debating that the consumer would absorb the content or the theme or the, the problem that the brand is trying to solve um, equally if it's designed in the right way and if the content is created for that screen. Would, would you agree with that? I would say that probably no, because I think that you have to create content that is contextual. I don't think influencer content, for example, that is created now mostly it plays better on mobile to me than it would in cinema. Yeah, I think you're making the argument for, for customizing content for the experience in terms of the advertising. You, you get your chance later. You can't talk We've about it. You've got 13 now. seconds left. No, no, this is hers. Oh, OK. I keep no. using up my time. This is going to go. This is going to go. The, we're not going to buzz at the end of this, and we're going to go through the full three minutes so that you can go back and forth. OK. That's how we'll do that. But you, you get okay. your chance later. This is Helmuth. OK. Now we, we get 20 seconds more because, because uh, had to set Chris the interrupted him. <laughs> you want 20 seconds? Go. I think we're saying the same thing. <laughs> Slightly. It's a debate. Well, it's a debate. I can't. Well, when it comes back to content. Is this a concession Listen, you're already? a jerk. Yeah. Yeah. Cohen, you don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Awesome. That's very funny. But, but I think that I can't believe there's anybody sitting on the side of Dave. Uh, is there anything else you want no, to lob no. across? OK, so whose turn is it now, Dave? They can respond. OK, sorry. They can respond to that statement slash question in a deeper way. Well, I mean, I, I, look, I agree that the way the resolution is, is worded, that we are talking about a, we're talking about the screen itself. Uh, but I think Alan's point is a relevant one, that the, the, the fact that the content of, uh, the, the content on the different screens is really there because of some unique thing about that screen that relates to that content. You can't really separate the, the two from each other. Uh, the, the element, the whole element of, of, of the screen itself, like for one just huge factor, 43% of all television viewing is done co-viewing. There's another person with you. Almost all uh, mobile phone viewing and place-based viewing to a certain extent, but certainly mobile phone viewing, uh, is done in isolation and not with an individual. That alone is something that uh, has a very significant influence. And, and in fact, uh, we have researched this material uh, consistently for over 20 years now, and it's, it does make a, a significant difference. Well, I have three seconds. Go I, for you know, it. No time. No. Oh. So now, Dave, you have one minute to make a statement or ask questions <laughs> of the four team. Well, I guess the, the, question, I, the question I would ask is that uh, if, you, if you were a producer of a television program, because this is a real thing I deal with all the time, and I, were t and I was going to test that program to decide, using my testing, whether or not we put that program on the schedule, 
would you not care what screen that program is tested on? Would you be comfortable with me testing it on a computer monitor instead of on a 55-inch television set? I mean, if you're a producer, of course you care. <laughs> you made the product. But uh, I think if you're a smart marketer, you're going you're gonna to test it on all three screens, and you're going to find out how people interact with it across all those screens. Um, I find interesting your, your hypothesis that well, if, you, if, you're, if you're testing it on all three screens, that means you think there's a difference between the screens. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, you want to see, right? Yeah, one, and, and it's interesting that the guy from CBS, the guy who I'm buying audience across television screens and tablets and PCs and mobile devices at the same price, um, <laughs> <laughs> is giving me some interesting rationale why I should maybe lower the price on the, on the mobile and the tablet side. There's not as many people watching, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then raise it on the other side. Do you mind to talk? So, no. So, all right, so, <laughs> okay. is this? Yeah. You'll get your chance. Do we get to posit a new thing at, at this point, or am I you, Yeah, you can, you can use the time for whatever. Use your time right. how you want to use it. You got, you're going to ask me any questions. I, we should. I, I, I do want to. I want to put one one point out for the for, for the argument of consistency, which is there are multiple considerations that any marketer should have when thinking about advertising on different screens in different environments with different context, and you have to think about the size and scale of the audience. You have to think about the context and what you want to do with the message. You have to think about the return that you're going to get from messaging in that environment. And you have to think about the demand on that particular asset, because something might be more effective from a return on investment standpoint or a return on impression standpoint, but you might not have to pay as much for it because there's less demand on it from other marketers. So I really do think that the ultimate equalizer in terms of how you should consider, again, valuing an impression on different screens in different contexts is what price you want to pay for that. You're going to pay for that based on the return, based on the demand, and based on, well, based on those two things, basically. Uh, so I think you have to think about all of those things. But at the end of the day, it makes sense for a marketer to know consistently what the potential scale of each of those platforms is with one metric, And the starting point. Fortunately, even though the buzzer just hit, you get to now ask a question. Oh, okay. Of these gentlemen. Uh, all right, what do you think, Helma? Uh, all right, so these guys are arguing for, against. <laughs> Let's just put it on record here. I think we kind of both agree with both sides. But um, for those people who think that it's completely separate and totally different and should be valued and treated differently, um, my, my main question for you guys is, you know, what's more efficient for the industry and in terms of creating fluidity between options that might be available for marketers through different video companies? Is, having a consistent metric that counts them or having something totally different that is transacted on and measured in every single environment and maybe different for every single advertiser? Well, Chris, I think it would make your job easier if everyone negotiated and it was the same price for everything, but it doesn't work that way. Oh, I don't want to pay the same price the, for everything. The, the, uh, I work with a lot of marketers, and I'm sure you do too, that when it comes to creative, they think a lot about what does their commercial look like for the Super Bowl? Are you going to watch it on mobile? Are you going to pay the same price for it on mobile? I'm not really the negotiator like Chris is, so I couldn't really say but what the cost is. But I think it's a different, I think David mentioned this word mindset, and I think let's not, let's emphasize it a little bit because it is completely about mindset. A lot of the marketers we work with will think that a mobile audience will look at a spot for 10 seconds with the sound down and then X out of it. I mean, maybe, maybe I'm arguing that it should be cheaper for him to buy it, but I think it's, diff it's a different experience on every screen, and therefore I think the advertising has to be customized for each platform. That's what I think. I kind of agree with that, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, they, <laughs> you know, stuck on this side. I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to the, uh, I mean, we, 
in the first place, this has been heavily researched, this area. There is a, 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 there's a, a moment, uh, an operation called Beyond 30 that a lot of the major agencies and advertisers have been part of that comes out of Australia, that Dwayne Varon runs, that has been doing every form of testing across screens and using all of the biometric feedback to measure that. We in our laboratory in Las Vegas just finished a test of a YouTube video versus a, a Big Bang on an iPad versus Big Bang on a television screen. And I can tell you, there are significant differences. In terms of the pricing, Chris, it's, it's, a, it, it's a simple fact. Uh, they have, we believe that the values of our television advertising space are different from the values of our mobile advertising space. We believe they have complementary benefits uh, and that th th those benefits determine the <laughs> premium price we pay on, pay on both of them. I know, but you so, just said before that there's no group you're, you're, you're going to have, your, you're gonna have your chances yet. <laughs> Alan, this is your chance ah. to ask yes, any questions question. of okay. these two. Mm -hmm. So I'll ask a question. Do you, um, besides negotiating, do you really believe that the consumer is, when, they, when they're on mobile, or like I, last night I went to the Man in the High Castle screening, it's an Amazon show. It was the first time I saw it not on my tablet. So when I looked at the show, it looked completely different. I saw things I didn't see before. But are you arguing that, that it's the same experience for the consumer and all these platforms, for the advertiser, that they should make content once and it should be placed in all these platforms? No. No. Frankly, we're not making that argument. We, we, we're on the side. We sort of had to, <laughs> but we wouldn't make that argument. OK, so what I are, mean, you, are you I'm, making? I'm I a think professional. <laughs> I can't say that we're making that argument. <laughs> well, we've got to come back to how people are using screens and what mindset they're in as they go along. You know, lots of people download things and watch them on the way to work on their, on their phone to kind of finish up something they're watching um, the night before. Or in the morning time, if you're searching for something, you're probably looking for you know, information, scores of the game, or weather, et cetera, and there's different types of content, you'd probably be more receptive to at that time of the day. So I think it's the use of the screens and coming back to the consumer and how receptive they are to the content. I think come, keep coming back to the content, which is the most important. And I would just add, I, the case we're making is a simple one, which is that um, there should be a pretty common counting metric for, for any kind of uh, screen video experience. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't customize the content for the experience. You absolutely should customize the content for the experience to drive the best return on the investment you're making. Um, that, that contextual placement is going to make it, it's going to make it work better. Uh, I would say that if you are, you know, if you're taking a long form programming strategy, uh, I, I think that the difference in the experience between the tablet and the PC and the television screen, are, they, there are differences there, but I actually don't see a, a huge issue with looking, that at, looking at that experience as pretty equal in terms of the advertising format, just because, because the program isn't being presented in a very different way, and the commercial breaks aren't being presented in a different way. I don't want to complicate things, but as we move more toward advertising as content, and all the marketers that really want to create their own content, and using influencers, maybe that's fading a little bit, but using influencer content, I just don't think it looks that good for the other platforms. But you would disagree with that? Like, like the, the mm -hmm. putting that content on the other platforms? We're not going to put a 30-second commercial on Snapchat, if that's what you're asking. I'm not, but that's okay. good to know. Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> Repurpose the 30s on Snapchat. That's the move right there. <laughs> Bad I don't think we've ever, ever done that before, I, right? I, yeah, that would be a mistake, I, I definitely believe. Um, Snapchat, I mean, is unique in its own right because they have a vertical format when you want to create content for it. I think everything and has unique, you know. But you would never think about watching and environment a Snapchat. and experience, they're different. But in you terms never of think understanding about the scale Snapchat of those platforms. Theater. Look, I just think there should be a, I do think, I feel very strongly there should be a consistent metric that you know, Facebook is going to publish that they've got billions of views, mm -hmm. and a TV network is going to publish that they've got billions of views, that we're all okay. talking the same language. Now it's my turn. So I'm going to be asking a question of the four team, mm -hmm. make a sort of statement question, and I'll be doing one for the against team. And we'll, uh, we'll start a new clock, because right, we already started our new clock. Thank you. So um, 
You feel a little boxed in, I understand, from the resolution <laughs> that, um, that you would sound ridiculous if you said it was totally agnostic and the same, though Joe Mandizi, I know, is out here. How many times have you had to write because someone said, we are totally screen agnostic, video is video is It's all video. the same. It's all the same. So that's, that's why we're having this debate, so that we can actually get into the issues. The one thing which I heard, and I, I'm interested in both of your perspectives on this, is um, they do different things. And so some people might look at them and say, well, are they, are they different levels of value in the same thing? Or do they do different things and we should see them at different parts of the decision funnel, the decision yeah. journey? <laughs> How would you think about that? Do they have to be packaged to be effective? If, Helma, if we could start with you and then Chris, I'd be interested in your perspectives. There's a lot of research actually around the concept of um, multi-screening and priming and how seeing messaging throughout the day can prime you for a more um, immersive experience. So potentially packaging a place-based screen with a message that's ultimately want, leading you to some television content or leading you to some video content. So I do think that put together in, in a strategic way, you can package the screens together to, to deliver a cohesive strategy. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think every platform has strengths and weaknesses, and when, when you can find multiple platforms that can fill in the gaps where another platform is missing, that's a, that's a net positive. So, you know, television is a very heavy user medium, and if you can find ways to reach light TV viewers at an efficient price in a contextual environment that's different than TV, because it needs to be, you know, if you're looking at a screen in, at, at a gas station or on an airline, those are places that people aren't in their living room watching television, so it's a wonderfully complimentary uh, opportunity to connect with that consumer. And it's a captive audience, you can't turn it off. Yeah, so how, because how might you see this a bit differently in your new role where it's less about necessarily negotiating in each of the points, but delivering a full solution to a yeah. client, you know, do you, do you well, think you think about- that's where I'm going with that, yeah. So that's, I'm, I'm saying if you're, yeah, if you're trying to drive business, you're, 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 you're trying to spend that money in a complementary fashion, not, in, not just adding more of the same, right? And there's more tools available to us than ever for us to be able to do that. And I, I, I think what, I, what I'm mostly trying to say is that you have to use all the tools and you should use all the tools and you should customize your approach to each of those platforms or tools. Um, but there's, no, there's nothing wrong with having a sense of the scale of that in a simple, uh, consistent manner. Okay. Um, if we, do we get to rebut that? Or no, no, well, you can, you can do that in response okay. to the question that I asked, okay. because you could determine to take the answer in a place that has nothing to do with my question, if you okay. prefer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's how we work. Okay. That's how we roll here. Okay, so. I'm going to come with a, I'm actually going to follow that on, so I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're interested in this topic. Um, Alan, both for you as someone who's working on behalf of clients, and do you feel like boutique minimalizes what you do? I think that doesn't talk about the grand scale of giant okay. spoon. Okay, just want to check on that. Um, when you're de developing a solution for clients, um, how do you think about how the elements come together? And then I'm going to follow that on to you, Dave, with... CBS is a bit of a unique company in that you, you have assets that are not only in television, but in radio and outdoor. Is the outdoor still connected or did that get spun? The outdoor it's still not connected anymore. Okay. But oh, that's right. It was earnings call. I don't want to get into anything. Mike. I'll talk in favor of okay. outdoor. Okay. If you could. I still love them. Okay. That's good. But, so I'm interested in both how you think from a client perspective and a selling perspective on how you think you will evolve leveraging the multiple contexts of video with the multiple screens. I mean, I guess I would start by saying that if you look at a company, if, I don't want to get too granular too quickly, but if you look at like a Coca-Cola, what they create for the cinema experience is not what they would create for their mobile experience. They would recognize the audience might be, the mindset of the audience might be a little different, even if the experience itself is different. So maybe they would create something that would work without sound, maybe they would create something that would work with sound, maybe they would create some influencer content, some integrated thing, that would, but it would be different for every platform. I don't know about TV and iPad, if that is as different as, you know, as some of the other screens that we're talking about. Yeah. But when I think about a massive screen, like the cinema screen, and a captive audience where you have no choice, the length of that commercial, you're fine to sit there. We did a spot for a company 
for Lego, it was 60 seconds. And in the theater, it seemed very short. But on mobile, it would seem really long. So I think that's, that's another, that's a, uh, maybe it's a mindset thing. I like it's that a, word. It's also it's a, it's an asset management storytelling thing. It's, it's there. You get your closing. OK. So it, it, it goes back to the concept, the concept they introduced before, which is borrowed interest. The, 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 the fact is that the screen and the, and the programming content context uh, will significantly influence the advertising effectiveness. And that, that context has to be taken into consideration. Uh, the, in, in the ideal world, uh, television advertising uh, creates scale. Uh, uh, and creates social and begins a process of social amplification. That social amplification then moves on to mobile devices and also on to, uh, it, it, it also in public settings can be a very effectively part of place-based media. Uh, but the, the process of beginning that, using that borrowed interest to begin the conversation okay. has to start with television. OK, we are ready for our closing statements. So we, have, we have three minutes here for four, and then three minutes against. I'll remind people once again of the resolution at the very end here. Video advertising should be treated screen agnostically and valued equally whether it is viewed on a tablet, phone, PC, TV, kiosk, or other place-based device. To viewers, it's all about the content. The screen doesn't matter. Why is that true? It's not entirely true. <laughs> oh, I guess we know who won. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Treasure. Tra You're not welcome back yes. over here. I think we can only, personally, I feel like we can only debate for one, one piece of that sentence, which is the, which is the, the common metric of, of, you know, counting the scale and the potential viewership of, or usership of any of those platforms. But I do, I think it ultimately, if, if you're a marketer, um, looking to communicate with you know, your consumer in the most effective manner, the, the best thing that you can do is you can create, you have, to, you have to identify who you want to be, what you want to be about, and you have to learn how to live that and learn how to be that, right? And the way that you're going to be that is you're going to act a certain way as a corporation, and you're going to message and create a story about who you are and what you, what you deliver to the consumer in the best possible way. And that story is going to have many chapters, and those chapters can be delivered through different platforms. So you should be managing your content, the content itself, by platform and, and customizing it to deliver the best possible result and the best possible connection on those platforms. So it is probably not all that unusual to create a 30 second or a 15 second ad that would live in long form content on a television screen and maybe moves to other screens as well. It certainly makes a lot of sense to create some custom influencer driven content that might live on Facebook or in, with, on Snapchat or in other social environments and maybe even speaking, adding to the storyline that was started with the longer form commercial and as you are you know, reaching people in an environment outside of the home, maybe in a place-based environment like a gas station, if you're a retailer or selling a product in a convenience store, or if you're in a movie theater, continuing or expanding or, in, uh, you know, expanding on that story in the best possible way for that environment. On the movie screen, maybe it's enthralling them and making it an even bigger uh, delivery of that message. And if it's in the place-based environment, it's recognizing that they're excuse me, that they're close to the, and have a proximity to purchase that, you know, you're going to start, try to close the sale there. Maybe you're going to get them to take an action mobily. Um, and, I, and I do think that you can support the entire thing with a social strategy that may or may not have video in it that may, you know, have a lot of, a lot of different content that's just reflective of your voice as, as, a, as a company. So I guess what I am arguing for across all of that is I totally agree with the fact that you need to customize content across different screens. I totally agree that there is a different value for all, through all those different screens and a different role for each of those screens to play. But I do not agree that every single one of those screens should be counted in a different way. OK. Do we get to, be, to, do we you, you get to close. That? You get to close. You get to pull oh, all of your arguments together well, at once. OK. The, 
Chris, I just don't understand uh, the, the concept of that they shouldn't be uh, counted in a different way. The, I mean, one of the, what we have, what, what we have now is an entirely different environment for television advertising. Two-thirds of the people watching a television ad now are also on a mobile device while they're watching the television ad. Uh, the, if, if you're making and measuring tele, television ads the same way you did before that was available, I think you're missing the point. Their ability to, act, to activate the audience, to go to that mobile phone, uh, to, to do something in search, to take advantage, their, the ability to interact in an interactive way add to that screen. I mean, that's one of the frustrations that I see in this industry, that the industry hasn't yet rallied around the fact that we've moved from uh, one-way communication in television to interactivity in television, and uh, people are not yet taking advantage of that. And one of the reasons may be because we, aren't measure, we haven't found the right way to measure it. And it's going to be a different form of measurement. And on the play-space side, that, that is a, that's a social environment. That's, uh, uh, the, the two things about play-space, first, it's a social environment. And second, it's close to the point of purchase and the purchase occasion. That makes for uniquely different uh, metrics. I mean, if I'm play-space, I want something that gets people to g walk into the store that is right in that vicinity. That's a different messaging and a different approach than, some, than a television uh, campaign that's designed to actually create brand equity, long-term brand equity for a product. The measures are quite different, and the, go the goals are different, and the measures have to be different. So I think in the interactivity comment that David was talking about, that I don't know whether or not it really took off as big as we had hoped, mm -hmm. but I still feel like our mission with marketers is to kind of create this breakthrough and to create content that is for a specific screen that might do something to get noticed. There is so much advertising out there, there's so much content out there, that how do you break through and how do you customize content to do it? So I would argue that you need to kind of be thinking about the screen let alone all the new technologies that we focus on at our company, but you need to think about that screen. I can't comment about how it's bought and sold. That's really Chris's job or his old job. Um, but, uh, but I feel like um, you, know, you really have to create that breakthrough. Okay, so um, first, they've been extraordinary sports for like dealing with the resolution. It was <laughs> hard on both sides, but um, is in, in spite of the fact they've been amazing sports, we are going to have winners and losers here because that's how the world works sometimes. So we're going to do this by, by applause. So first, I'm going to ask for applause for the for, and then I'm going to ask for applause for the against. And then Barry is going to determine either accurately or arbitrarily, and it's up to him who won. Yeah. So four. He's going to say Dave won. <laughs> applause for the four team. Come on, come on, come on. Uh-oh. We got about halfway. No. Applause for the against team. I got it. Come on, let's go. Mm. Get a little louder. Well, I, I think it's pretty clear that the four team, congratulations, wow. humbling Chris, well done. In spite of him almost like changing sides. Yeah. Well, it's some great sports, by the way. And the real winner, of course, are these folks and Dave Morgan. Dave, by the way, the reason he's so good at this is not that he's a terrific and bright guy, but he's also a lawyer by training. So he's really got a lot of good experience. I think also, compared to a lot of the political debates going on now, you've done a much better job than all of them. I think it's really well done. He's way, he should be on CNBC. It's fabulous, it's great. Uh, congratulations to Chris Magel. What's your new title? Uh, President Initiative. President of Start, Initiative, isn't Starting that, in January. It's starting in January. Isn't that, isn't that fabulous? David, w w were you swayed at all? Do you have a kind of a sense of what you're thinking? Well, I wasn't appreciating until the discussion. I was thinking it as a value-weighted conversation, and I really came away thinking a lot more it's an integrated discussion, mm -hmm. and that's the place where the industry has to move it to, and it's sort of silly that 
people are all running around saying everything is video agnostic. They're not talking about what's the marketing solution and how do the pieces come together. And I think we heard that from both sides. That was the piece that hit me, and it's going to have to be both much more creative in how it's bought and sold um, and created mm -hmm. um, for it to come together. But that, that, that's really, I think you're right, this really interesting. Uh, uh, do you, David, do you, been doing a lot of things here. Do you think that the, the systems and the buy side and the sell side are, are in place to uh, affect that nuance? Absolutely not. Okay. Right. No, I mean, I think it's going to be created by the market participants. I think that people are going to have to step up. I mean, I think Dave made a really good point. We <coughs> do not have the measurements and metrics today we need to value these things going forward. And we're going to have to have created solutions that, that leverage the mobile device in someone's hand when they're watching something on TV or going by a place-based kiosk in a mall. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have to have people that are buying or organizations that are building it together that are going to be able to value that and negotiate and deliver it for the clients. And th they don't exist today, but we'll have some people doing it. And I think then you know, people will copy or they'll get out of the business. I think that's a great way to sum it up. David, Chris, Helma, Alan, and Dave. Thank you all so much. Let's Thanks give them a so big much. hand. Thanks so much. Well done. Great stuff.